folks, just with support here. I'm doing another movie review this week. Since I just reviewed UHF, my favorite We're All Yankee Big comedy. That's uh, totally zany, uh, weird, uh, hilarious, and brilliantly um, inventive right there. You know, where you have a daydreamer who now becomes a general station manager of a rundown analog UHF television station which plays nothing but reruns of classic shows and, and other stuff and now he begins to turn this station upside down uh, with the help of an engineer uh, joining in with the secretary and of course his best friend and roommates but he also uh, joins in um, because he hired the janitor from the VHF station Channel 8, which is run by the antagonist himself. And soon he, um, soon they, they finally got um, this channel up and running on the air, you know, rivaling against um, the high power VHF station, you know, Channel 8. Yeah. But Channel 62, of course, we get uh, all the successful shows like the Spanley Spadowski uh, Clubhouse. Yeah, which uh, has this very touching moment there was when, you know, focusing on his life of being a janitor and he's teaching the kids how, how someday you'll be able to go around grabbing a mop and cleaning and rinsing and, and get to polish everything around the studio. And having to see that moment uh, with Stanley, who was played by Michael Richards, you know, sort of has sort of like an early version of Cosmo Kramer right there. You can see the the uh, <laughs> the slapstick and um, the the physical um, comedy that he's done in, in the yeah like he's doing all of his uh, his sticks uh, does his sticks around here so you could tell. Um, but he really cares for George. I mean George did something for him that he never thought he would have. And he also cares for everyone around. I mean, even though his life is pretty much in a turmoil and on his own, and especially with his girlfriend, uh, Terry, and he forgot. But everything made it up at the end, and they had to come up with $75,000 enough to save the station and, and also to stop this guy from destroying it. Yeah, that's the purpose of the story. But I always love it. It has a lot of memorable quotes. Uh, memorable uh, scenes with the sh with all these uh, bizarre programming like Conan the Librarian. Uh, there was Emo Phillips uh, who plays like a a worksman who who is about to um, you know carve something and then suddenly he accidentally cut his fingers off and it squirts all this blood out. Very disturbing scene. Yeah, forgot to mention that. Um, and then there's then you get uh, like the whale fish and you got the karate instructors, you know, saying, Stupid! You're so stupid! Into supplies! <laughs> I, I just love that. And all these other, uh, you know, hijinks and other <laughs> commercials, uh, such as Spatula City and everything. Yeah, I mentioned all that. Uh, very fun. Okay. <laughs> Well, now that I got that out of the way, um, I'm going to do another movie because I just uh, went out to, to Target um, the other day. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to continue to buy some more titles on 4K, Blu-ray, and DVDs. I mean, it's not easy having to find titles uh, for a lot less, but I'm trying my best. This, this is the early Black Friday deals, and I know there's going to be some later ones coming up. Um, you know, after Thanksgiving, so I'm not so sure how that's going to turn out because we are spending a lot. But we'll see um, how this will go. I mean, maybe the prices will go lower this time. Like maybe under ten dollars, or maybe one's under twenty. I don't know. But like I said, it's not not easy having to get something for a lot less because the prices are still higher, for especially box sets. I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway, um. This time it's a CGI animated feature uh, that's from Sony Pictures Animation, the same people that gave us um, 
open season, uh, Surf's Up, uh, the Hotel Transylvania movies, and and the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs films come to mind. And yes, even the Emoji movie. <laughs> yeah, the less we said about that film, the better. Well, this came out last year. Um, it is available on streaming on Netflix. But it's nice that we finally got a physical media copy that, that just came out the same year too, but just later on. It's called The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Um, it's pretty much the old standard formula of dysfunctional families going on a road trip to whatever place they go to and they get into bigger trouble. So it's kind of like National Lampoon's Vacation meets The Terminator. Where this time we get a, dis a quirky dysfunctional family called the Mitchells, which also focus on their daughter, who's the main character of the story, uh, Katie Mitchell, who's an inspiring filmmaker doing all these uh, short films uh, with this uncross um, bug guy, uh, a pug, yeah, it's a dog, <laughs> um, doing all these um, uh, very insane shorts, such as uh, all these dog cop uh, shorts that she would post online, so that way she'll become very popular and well-known. So she wanted to attend at the university in order for her to become a filmmaker for sure. But then, and plus she's also a movie buff too, uh, so I can relate to that. But this family is also obsessed and addicted to, to technology as we know it, such as smartphones, tablets, laptops, all these uh, streaming devices and all this other stuff. You, you guessed it. I mean, the internet and all. But you have one father who's, a, who's also obsessed, but mostly a more caring one, for sure, who's, who's more into nature and physical uh, activity rather than technology. So that's pretty much what we're getting, folks. And I know sometimes I get ticked off having to see a movie where it's going to be more about that than, than the story that they fold. And I know this happens a lot with films like Unfriended and it happens uh, with um, any other movie that we're getting. I mean, especially if it's a, a found footage and POV type. But then sometimes, you know, they can get more creative and they can get better. And I'm, I'm glad, at least right for sure, you know, they, they're trying this hard to write a very smart, intelligent script and try to be as more memorable as it could be possible to be. Who knows? And it's it's very refreshing how it turned out. I mean, especially when you have the producers uh, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller to be involved because after all, they're, they're the ones who bought us uh, the Lego movie and also uh, Spider-Man, yeah, Into the Spider-Verse, sorry. Okay, so with that name alone, you can't go wrong. Yeah. And I'm happy to hear that. Um, I just, I got a little turned off by it. If, um, because I wasn't so sure how this was going to perform. Because I thought this was going to be yet another, you know, emoji movie that we got. That Sony put out a few years ago. And, and let me tell you something. Having to watch this movie, this really beats the crap out of the emoji movie so this is how you do it right folks right there <laughs> okay now this is the uh, brand new well it came out last year of course um, this is the blu-ray combo pack it doesn't have a 4k there are movies that have 4k's to join with blu-rays and DVDs but then there are a few titles out there that that don't even bother to have one uh, especially in this generation that we're in, you know, the millennial generation. Um, but this is a, a special edition set, and this is an excellent set to own, um, especially if if you had just saw the movie on Netflix. 
Uh, now, the reason why Netflix had picked this up for distribution to join in with Sony is because of the pandemic that was going around. It was going to be released in 2020 under the title Connected, which led to this. But they felt that maybe they needed a better change in the title, which to me is a lot better. You know, the Mitchells versus the Machines. And it's also the fact that now they're coming with something different and something rare that we don't often see, is that they actually managed to cast a, or they begin to create an LGBT uh, character, which is, yes, it stands for uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. Um, representation that they were doing uh, for the main character that they got, which is Katie Mitchell. Like, even if she isn't what she is, I mean, I, I, I still, I really buy it, too. I mean, she's just like any other character we've seen in, in other family films, too. Or, or any adult movies, for that matter. Like, you're going to have a quirky character that you're going to get into and, and you're going to love and, and relate to. Um, like a coming-of-age story right there. So, <laughs> okay. Now, the story is definitely uh, simple. It, it is about the, the dysfunctional family, you know, the Mitchells, who are, are about to go on a road trip that gets into bigger trouble. When they get in a run-in with, with a global robot uprising that's happening. So this is going to be the end of the world as we know it, where all these machines are going to take over and they're going to destroy humanity. But it's up to this family, even if they're called the worst family ever, uh, they have to save Earth from total destruction. Especially with this evil AI uh, that's under the system. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> but it works. Okay, so now let's get to the, uh, the Blu-ray that I picked up. Because I got this at Target for only about 15 bucks. Yeah, I, I wish it was $9.99, but hey, I, I had to take it elsewhere. So here's the slip cover, as I already showed you. Uh, on the back, as you can see. Um, but same here with this case. And this has um, just two hours of special features, which includes Katie's extended cinematic bonanza cuts. So this was like the kind of cut they would use, uh, just like how they did it in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, when they had that on Blu-ray in 4K. Uh, yes, they got deleted scenes, uh, filmmaker's commentary, and... They even got the this uh, featurette, or I think this is a short film called How a Group of Passionate Weirdos Made a Big Animated Film. Yeah, it's a featurette. And it also has How to Make Sock Puppets, uh, How to Make Katie's Face Cupcakes, uh, Katie's Cabinet of Forgotten Wonders, and of course it even has the all-new mini-movie Dog Cop 7, the final chapter, yeah, which features... Doug the Pug, <laughs> who's uncross-eyed, uh, bug-eyed um, dog that they have, <laughs> who's pretty much in all these other shorts, and it has those eye-popping animation style that they blend in um, within the, the CGI animated in, in there. It's like it's sort of like a mix of of two D animation in there too, and it has a uh, a little bit of, yeah, rotoscoping animation, kind of like what they did with, once again, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, you know, where they use rotoscoping, and they use a lot of uh, flashy lights, uh, brighter colors, and gives it a comic book feel to it um, in that particular style and the movements. But it does have a lot of photosympathy for everyone who who ends up getting epileptic uh, seizures for those who can't handle that well it also has this in this movie too 
Uh, but it has all these pop-ups and stuff, like like all these uh, comic strips. Like you'll begin to see like all these uh, drawings, kind of like in the <laughs> uh, like in those, those diary of the wimpy kid types. I mean, yeah, like they always throw in these uh, these notepads and they they just show you a drawing of these characters and all that stuff and quirkiness, humor in there. That's just how they did it. Okay, uh, yes, um, there's a digital code for Movies Anywhere, but I already used it. Yeah, just advertisement for, you know, how you send all, all free movies, um, if you have the Sony Rewards. Yeah. Here's the, um, <laughs> this uh, booklet right here, uh, Director's Notes, um, Inside the Mind of Katie Mitchell, right there. <laughs> And um, yes, has all the information you can see right there. And look at the back. Yeah, just uh, parodies of all these uh, all these movies. You know, like No Country for Old Man. Oh, the Social Network. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, they parody that. And and the monster that was nice and cool, but no one liked for some reason. <laughs> Uh, it, it says the no country for unpopular teenagers, the not social network, all that. <laughs> it's just crazy. All right. Oh yeah, and here's the um, the uh, okay. Here's the Blu-ray, and there's the uh, the DVD, which has a CDR look right there. Yeah, I, I have a C a Sony CDR just like that, <laughs> but it says C CDL. <laughs> Yeah, so they put in that particular style and because, yes, they, they used to use um, all these CDRs and they added music and all that. And I like what we did, too. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I'm going to put this away and we're going to begin with this movie right here. It stars Abby Jacobson. Danny McBride, yes, uh, who's been in a lot of uh, comedies and other movies too, uh, such as um, Eastbound and Down from HBO, Bites Principles, The Righteous Gemstones, um, as well as Pineapple Express. Um, he was also in a movie called Arizona. I just got that too uh, from Dollar Tree recently. Uh, Maya Rudolph. Um, Yes, she was a cast member from Saturday Night Live, but she has been in comedies like Fifty First Dates, A Prairie Home Companion, Idiocracy, <laughs> and um, Away We Go, all come to mind. In fact, she's also going to be in the new uh, Enchanted sequel, which is coming out this week, uh, Disenchanted. So she's going to play a villain in that film. Really cool. <laughs> yeah, Mike uh, Ronda. Who, of course, is the uh, the cartoonist, the uh, director, writer, and voice actor, because he created uh, Gravity Falls, the TV show that's on the Disney Channel. So he also had helped this movie out. Um, so I'm gonna explain that after. And yes, uh, he does the voices of all the other characters that we see here. Uh, Eric Andre, uh, yes, he's on. He's from that Adult Swim show, uh, the uh, the Eric Andre show. Um, he was on FXX uh, TV series Man Seeking Woman, uh, among others that he's done. Uh, Olivia Coleman, um, an English actress, uh, done some other films uh, in her career. Um, and she is a comedic and dramatic actress. Uh, Fred... Armisen, um, well, I think he was also on Saturday Night Live, yeah, and, and he has done, um, he's done other stuff too, on, especially uh, the IFC series of uh, Portlandia. Uh, Beck uh, Bennett, um, another Saturday Night Live uh, alumni. <laughs> well, we're getting a lot of Saturday Night Live's uh, alumni in this movie. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, 
Christy uh, Tagian. Uh, it, it's a you know who's a um, professional model uh, for the Sports Illustrated uh, swimsuit issues and stuff. Uh, John Legend, yes, the uh, the musician, uh, songwriter, pianist, and all. Yeah, I mean he was also in the movie La La Land. He does a lot of jazz and pop. Uh, Charlene uh, Yi, yeah, she's a Comedian. Uh, she was actually in, in the movie uh, Paper Hearts with uh, actor Michael Cera. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stamping myself here. Uh, Blake Clifford, uh basketball player for the Boston Celtics. Uh, Conan O'Brien, of course. Yeah. Coco himself um, says, I know he wrote uh, some Simpsons episodes. And had his late night talk show on NBC, which is a late night with Conan O'Brien. And then for a while, he had the Tonight Show taken over for Jay Leno until he got taken over by Jimmy Fallon later. But then he winds up having his own the late night talk show for TBS. And I think he's going to be doing something for HBO Max. I don't know exactly, but we'll see. <laughs> but it's nice he's still doing more work. And, of course, Doug the Pug. <laughs> yep, as uh, Munchie. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I just mentioned. <laughs> okay. It, it's written by uh, Mike Rinda, along with Jeff Rao, who also wrote uh, Gravity Falls. He's also wrote um, this Netflix series, uh, Disenchantment. And it's also directed by... Mike Ronda. The movie begins where we meet this quirky, dysfunctional family living in Kenwood, California, known as the Mitchells. Uh, we have the father who loves to explore nature everywhere he does. I mean, he's been doing this for such a long time, like ever since he was a child. I mean, he always loves to. Um, built things uh, and carved things out of wood like he even made a log cavern and also loved to explore everything out of the woods you know like there's going to be some many of these uh, wild creatures going around and and he, he just wants to be this kind of adventurous guy that you know love and care for and not to mention you know, he gets along with the family so well, for sure. Except nowadays, you know, things have changed because, you know, with new technology going around, with all the obsession that's happening with this entire family, it, they don't seem like they're not having any more family connections or communications uh, whatsoever. So nowadays... Um, his wife, um, Linda, uh, along with um, his daughter, Katie, and their son, Aaron, are mostly focusing you know, on their, their most uh, important hobbies of their own. Like, yes, I mean, because we all have hobbies, too. You know? I have a hobby myself. Uh, we have um, Katie Mitchell, who's the protagonist of the story, that she wants to become an inspiring filmmaker. She's very quirky too. Um, and she wanted to create all these short films that she's done, mostly focusing on her family dog uh, named Munchie, who's, yeah, which is Doug the Pug. Okay, and by the way, uh, Linda is played by Maya Rudolph. Um, Katie is played by... Abby uh, Jacobson and Aaron is played by Mike Ronda. Come to mind. <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, Katie uh, wanted to become a filmmaker for sure. This is her passion. She's a movie buff herself. So she even loves to do a lot of spoofs in her videos um, that she can upload on, her, on this YouTube type page. So now... Sooner or later, she'll be accepted at film school in California, uh, which is a university somewhere. 
And so, so of course, it's all about obsession and addiction. Like, all, all they focus on is, you know, their cell phones, their, their laptops, their tablets, and all of that. I mean, Linda basically just just plays around watching her stream videos and all this other stuff on on her smartphone and while um <laughs> while Aaron is is totally obsessed with dinosaurs you know he, he loves to go to these uh dinosaur theme parks someday you know he loves to collect the dinosaurs a lot too I mean I can see that <laughs> So, yes, they just don't seem to have much time for family communications or meetings or anything of their own. So, that, that's the purpose of the story here. Anyway, but that evening before Katie leaves, um, because she just got accepted to a film school, hoping to take the, um, the plane to go there, Wick accidentally breaks her laptop after they had a fight over her previous films uh, involving the dog, as we know it, uh, Monchi. Because it seems like he just wasn't really interested. You know, they, they had sort of a bitter rivalry with each other, even though they used to care for themselves. But ever since they just grew up, you know, nothing has been the same. For, for their relationship and their bonding. So they, they were afraid that they would be forever restrained, for sure. But to try to prevent all this from happening, Rick decided to cancel Katie's flight um, and instead take her to another road trip, just like how they've been doing uh, in the past. But they're going to try to do this to join with Linda, Aaron and their dog Manchi to go all the way there to California while they're going to experience uh, a lot of places uh, while they're on the way you know they're just going to go to these gas stations to you know to get some gas and get some food and all they're going to go explore some nature uh, outside of the neck of the woods and then then they're going to go to like I, I guess the Grand Canyon or They'll get to see like other exploring places around, you know, just just to have some fun, and also, you know, get to listen to music that that uh, he remembers uh, during uh, Katie's childhood days, um, you know, where he used to uh, sing this song, uh, which came out in the two thousands, basically, you know what it is. Hey? The, the Numa Numa song. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. Okay. Um, so hoping that maybe he'll cheer up uh, Katie for sure. And see how this is going to go. And then, yeah, Katie got bored. You know, just writing all, all this stuff. She's taking pictures. She's, she's filming all this stuff on her phone. All that stuff. So he'll assume, you know, just for her boredom, he'll probably just... Had all these uh, crazy, insane uh, antics happening uh, with the family, <laughs> and she'll probably end up posting it on YouTube right away. Uh, meanwhile, we meet this technology entrepreneur named Mark Bowman, who's played by Eric Andre. He's the founder and the scientist of PAL Labs. Uh, this is the company that brought in all this technology that they got. And he was the one that created the, the AI known as PAL. And she's voiced by Olivia Coleman, who's definitely a ruthless, arrogant, and maniac rogue virtual assistant that's created by Mark. And now, because he's going to get rid of her and get replaced by this new uh, AI, soon... She's going to have revenge against him for the entire humankind. So now she's going to be the one to take over the all these AIs, uh, robots that, that he was coming up with. And now they're going to go around 
creating a chaos throughout the entire world. Major destruction, end of the world type. And yes, and this is the beginning where it all happened, and this is where Powell eventually traps uh, Marx uh, somewhere in in the, the jail cell and everything, uh, joining in with with the rest of, of their the crews, and, and yeah, they're just blasting them into this one flashy uh, cube. Yeah, it, actually, it's a cube that they actually put all the the employees and the humans inside. So it is like a jail cell. And they're all going to be put together like, like a whole entire Tetris block. For sure. So yes, um, they were already in Kansas at a road stop cafe. And they, they got bumped into another family to join in. Which is the, the Posey family. Yes, they got um, Haley, Jim, and Abby. Uh, they're all played by Chrissy Tygon, John Legend, and Charlene the uh, E to join in. And, and this is kind of like what you saw in National Lampoon's Vacation. You know, they always get a run in with another family. So, of course, you get the nice family, and then you get uh, the poor family. That sort of thing. And, and yes, I mean, you get Aaron try to fall in love with this, this girl because she too uh, loves dinosaurs as well. But as for Haley and Jim, they're sort of like a competitive uh, for Rick and Linda, that sort of way. Okay. <laughs> so then, um, already the, the AIs are there. All these robots are already, you know, taking all the humans away. They're, they're already, you know, creating a lot of destruction. Uh, they're about to hide out and they're about to go around killing these robots. Uh, the only ones uh, that they met that are defected are Eric and Deborah bought 5,000. And they're... <laughs> yes, and they're played by um, Beck Bennett and Fred uh, Armisen. So they're, they're the only ones uh, who could tell the family that they can use a kill code to shut down Pal and all the robots around. So... The Mitchells suddenly made it straight to Eastern Colorado. They went to the shopping mall, which everything is being run by PAL. So you get to see all these electronic devices, you know, going completely insane and and going on a killing spree in a way, that <laughs> in that sort of way, sort of like they're turning against him. It's kind of like maximum overdrive in a way, um, when all this technology turned against the humans. I mean, it's it's insane. Oh, but you're going to love this. Um, out of all the technical devices they have in each of these uh, stores around, <laughs> even those department stores, uh, there's this one toy store, and you wouldn't believe this, they actually featured Furby. Yes, Furby. You know, remember Furby from the 90s? I can't believe they actually feature that in this movie. And it's, it's crazy. So you got all these, uh, you got this giant Furby and all the rest of these other Furbies around. And they're just going around chasing the family. And they're about to defeat them completely. <laughs> destroying the PAL router in the process for sure. And they had to disable all those puzzle devices from each and every one of them for sure. So that way they'll try to destroy to stop the total destruction but it just keeps getting worse and worse as it follows but then you know they have to try to learn their their lesson here and there and they're trying to you know try to make sure that for sure that Mitchells will try to do their best to save the entire world try to be able to to stop pal and hopefully they'll save um, mark because he's trapped in there. And hopefully, and when they're all trapped, I mean, they, they have all the equipment and all the stuff that they took out from from the mall. And they're going to prepare themselves to stop these robots. They're going to go around killing them, everything they got. And hopefully they'll be able to destroy Pal. I mean, because Pal, on the other hand, is just... 
Boy, I mean, you just really hate this character so much. I mean, yeah, I could understand how she feels because she doesn't like to be, you know, left out all alone and not getting the attention she deserves and all that stuff. I mean, this is exactly what Katie felt too, you know, at, at her age as a teenager. But then she learned something about that, that all we care about is family and family should stick together no matter what. You know, even if we're going through a major crisis or happening here and there, I mean, they're always going to do whatever they can to be a part of it. But And also, because um, Rick also had looked at one of Katie's uh, recordings, you know, coming from all these home videos that they've done. And yes, I mean, she's even recording all this other stuff that she was doing while they were on the trip. That's where Rick eventually tries to figure out how to use uh, the technology, uh, try to use the kill code and other, other stuff, and also go on the internet and watch all these videos on YouTube and begin to find a way to, to sign in his account, which isn't really that hard, if you ask me. But for him, it is. <laughs> Because he's not interested in, in technology. He's not into the internet or any of those uh, devices that we go through. I mean, he's more of a physical type of guy. Like, he's more old-fashioned, in a way. So that's for sure. <laughs> so he was trying to do whatever he can to actually have all of, of these robots uh, begin to watch all these videos replacing... All of this with Katie's uh, short films, uh, which is Dog Cop. <laughs> and that way, you know, if they started laughing, they're going to be destroyed, for sure. <laughs> so, yes. So, they, the Mitchells have finally saved the day. Um, they saved all the families, the humanity. And it's been a few months. They now became heroes. And now, finally, Katie had had attended to film school at the university, you know, just spending time with her friends, doing all the work and everything, and, and also they pay a visit um, because they just moved to a, a new house. And with the intuition and everything going around, I mean, they can finally uh, come to a visit to, to meet uh, Katie, especially on Thanksgiving, too. You know, they'll have some time. While she's busy doing all of her work and stuff. So, <laughs> so it's not the end for the Mitchells. <laughs> for if, if they end up continuing to go for their next adventure. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, it's a very fun, hilarious, uh, very um, well-made, uh, heartwarming story right there. For a CGI animated feature that... Sony Pictures Animation has ever done. Um, and some great uh, voice acting right there. And and they really took the, the guts and the chance to do something this insane for a project. But when you, but hey, when, when it comes to Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, they can really come up with something this fresh and totally um, incredible. Like, because... Like, something we didn't expect to see, like something that's so bizarre, can really work. And they sort of um, throw in a nod to all these other animators um, as we speak. I mean, it's sort of, because since this is from the same man that gave us Gravity Falls, because now we're going for this particular animation, you know, done by Digital Ink and Paint, and they're coming up with this particular style of animation, which isn't quite as great as, as the other kinds of 2D animation traditionally as they were, but they're just coming up with their own particular style. And the way they did it in this movie really works, because, um, again, they put a lot of flashiness in there. They put, a, they put this particular style of showing um, all these uh, drawings uh, that's on a notepad, there's a lot of uh, scribbles too with markers and other imageries that they draw on and, and how it just comes alive 
and the way they did it. I mean, I know it, it kind of rambles a lot too, right there, but they just did it. And this comic book style type of feel, these, uh, all these, yeah, all these drawing like uh, animation too, and they blend in with 2D and, and 3D. They, they even show like um, some realistic photos too of, because this is supposed to be uh, based on a true story, actually. It's based on a real-life uh, family, uh, as we speak. Um, so, yeah, there actually really was the Mitchells, uh, for real, as well as all the other families. So, uh, if you saw the end credits, you'll be able to see tons of photographs of, of many families um, that go on to become, you know, very memorable, very high-class um, they, they become a very wonderful and caring families of, of all, you know, even if they are dysfunctional or, or not, you know. And of course, uh, that's the, the subject of the subject matter of them all is, is about family communications, uh, obsession, as well as addiction, you know, because of course, being addicted to technology with your hobbies is like a drug like you'll never get tired of it you get so excited over it like you just don't seem to have time for anything but hey but no matter what you know we'll always be family and we care for one another we care for each other for the good times and the bad we're all here and that's really the very big importance and it has a great soundtrack um, yeah the, in fact uh, Mark um, Muttersbot yeah the, the lead singer who gave us Devo and I know he's done uh, composing work for Rugrats and other shows um, yeah he did this very crazy score right there here and there and and he also brings in with other various artists that he may have known for and familiar with, for sure. Um, anyway, uh, back to the animation style, too, which I mentioned already. Uh, it gives it a hand-painted watercolor style. Uh, they also um, had an image of other footages that we've seen. Like You've probably seen a lot of this on the Internet. But they blended in together for these shots. And, yeah, like, like they use all these GIFs, you know, the GIFs, where they show, like, an animal, you know, making all these, uh, <laughs> these uh, crazy um, antics and other stuff that they blend in. That's like, wow. Um, yeah. And they even inspired all, all the effects that they use for the, for the robots. Technology, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to my Sony uh, CyberShot digital camera footage here because <laughs> I just want to add a few more things in this review. Is that uh, the characters in the movie are actually uh, just like all these other quirky uh, families that we've seen in all these uh, dysfunctional family uh, formalic uh, pictures that we had. Um, but these characters, you know, you really care for them. You really do. I mean, <laughs> no matter how crazy and insane or, or, you know, out of focus here and there. But you know you want to see them a lot. You want to see them more. You know, even with its witty humor and their quotes and all of this. This crazy antics that they put into it. And the story, I mean... <laughs> Like, and the fact that you have two AI robots who become dim-witted in a way, but they also become, well, heroes themselves in a way. <laughs> um, because at least now they know they're getting a little smarter and intelligent, but, but also thick-headed in some ways. <laughs> Which I thought that was pretty clever that they went for. And the fact that you have a villain who's run through a smartphone right there is, you know, as arrogant as she could be, that character Powell. I mean, damn, I mean, the way she's, 
you know, she's using all all of her savagery in in her performance here is just wow. Like whatever she's done, I mean, it's like she doesn't have no heart and soul whatsoever. Like no matter like whatever this a touching moment going around that's that she probably would understand well, she just turns into a more a more pompous uh you know, type of woman who just doesn't care. Because after the way you know, she was treated, you know, from from her founder. Even though the founder of the company was actually a very nice, great guy, you know, I, I know he he had a rejector, but, but that's because, you know, they were coming up with new technology. This often does, anyway. I mean, you've seen um, what all these entrepreneurs uh, like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates have done. They always provided some new technology for their companies, you know, for Apple and, and Microsoft. So this was a take on that. You know, I bet this movie would have done so well in theaters, too, and it would have been a huge hit. Um, in fact, it was going to be nominated, uh, which it was, too. It got nominated for Best Animated Feature and... And on the Andy Awards, but didn't win, unfortunately, because, of course, El Canto came out uh, that year. Uh, I guess it's kind of pretty rare these days when a movie that was supposed to come out ends up on a streaming platform like Netflix. And I know Sony had been putting out other films, too, like Vivo, that was also on Netflix. And... Um, which is amazing because that also had Lynn Morrell Miranda who also did do El Canto and In the Heights and all that that same year. Um, so Sony, of course, has been working on some of their projects and they had to be sent to other streaming platforms like, like Prime Video, um, Apple TV Plus, and any other services and I guess even Roku as well you know with, with the Roku channel um, and enough for them to actually save their time and effort uh, to create more movies if if they continue to go for this practice before you know feeders are finally back open again and they'll start releasing more movies again they'll go back to their profits and hopefully they'll stay strong no, no matter what Oh, yeah, and I forgot about Hulu, too. Yeah, Hulu's another one. So that's what we're getting. I mean, I know I know this is becoming a problem these days for Hollywood, but no matter what they're trying to do, we hope everything that they have, we survive. And everything should be survived, too. We don't want to be stuck with, with just the Internet device and streaming devices and all that stuff for movies. You know, I mean, especially theatrical and inter in independent films too because then this is going to be just like well it's just tv <laughs> for sure okay so anyway uh that's the mitchells versus the machines and i give the movie um surprisingly five stars i'm joseph a sabora and i'll see you later bye